Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be playing the final blitz on Lee Chess. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before we start up with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start up with this game and see how it goes. Got the white pieces. I'll play the London system setup, which starts with d4. Bishop comes on f4. And then we can close this pawn uh, chain by playing pawn forward. Ah, that's weakening already. I would recommend that you should never play uh, f5 so early in the game. Um, okay, now how do I take advantage of that? I'll continue with my normal development for now. Plant my knight there in the center. That's always a good option. Maybe bishop here and then give a check. Okay, he plays pawn forward, which means there's some weakness in the structure already. I'll go ahead with the pawn to begin with. Maybe play h5 as well someday. Okay, I'll play knight here. I'll take with the pawn. Uh, or I should take with the bishop. Let's take with the bishop and not spoil the pawn structure. And then get my knight here, which defends my bishop. Oh, knight can hop in here as well, at least for now. Okay, so he wants to exchange. I'll say I let him take, so that I take with the knight. That would be better. And I place my bishop here so that this diagonal is also lined up as soon as I take. So now that attacks his knight. So he moves the knight back, which means I can play pawn forward. And go for the attack further. Maybe pawn forward, expecting it. Yep. Um, can I play it forward again? Yes, I can. He moves the knight, maybe goes here. And then I get, go with my bishop on h5. Yes, he moves the knight. Which means I get to spoil his castling. Always helpful. And the only place is this. Okay, now how do I make sure that he crumbles more into the situation? Maybe pawn forward and letting him play pawn forward as well. This is protected with my bishop and vice versa. So I'll be con taking control of this diagonal forever, which would be nice. I'll play pawn forward defending the check. system is getting slower I have this move as well Queen lining up here towards the King okay so opponent has played pawn forward I can take I should take it Open takes with the knight or the pawn. Takes with the knight. Okay. I go here with the queen at least. I have to get this knight removed from here somehow. So that would be it. Let's see what my opponent does. Uh, trying to attack the pawn, so I'll castle here, saving my pawn as well. I can do a rook lift if required. So now the knight is going to come here. 
and I see troubles for the opponent already. Pawn is always going to prevent him from coming here. Bishop is going to prevent him from, from coming here. So I've taken full control of it. And now the knight is going to go away soon. And that would be checkmate pretty quick. Unless he gets his queen there in time. Doesn't, at least for now. So I'll take this. He takes back, I'll take. Maybe queen, uh, rook comes here, attacking my queen. Yes, it does, but that hardly changes anything because I'm gonna give a check first. Let's see where the opponent goes. Goes there. You give a check again, trying to push him back here and then a check from here and I can take the rook as well. He's gonna lose a rook for sure. I'm not letting him go away with this. Okay, here comes the check. And here goes the rook. I'm getting my other rook active as well, if required. No, oh, it might be for doing a quick checkmate. Uh, I can give a check from here, but that's not mate. He can come back. What I can give with the bishop and force him to go somewhere else? No, I don't want him to run away. So I'll give it the queen only and then get my rook active. So he resigns. So that's how you should play solid and aggressive. Let's analyze the game quickly once from computer perspective. I'll turn on the computer analysis and let's start from the beginning. I start off with d4, the London system setup, and then my open response with d5. A general response you will see against d4 is d5 mostly. I play bishop f4. Uh, my opponent plays f5, as I said, it's bad move in the opening, and here you see the computer evaluation of the move as well. From point one in favor of white, it goes to point in, or from black it goes to point nine in favor of white so that's not a good move as i said uh, while playing as well i play e3 trying to develop my pieces normally and then i go with knight on f3 opponent plays knight on f6 i go on in the center with e knight e5 opponent plays g6 and yes i played the best move here h4 going for the attack uh, open plays a knight d7. I go with knight to d2. Open can take on the knight, which he does. And I take back with the bishop, the right choice, because you don't want to spoil your pawn structure. And then he plays bishop g7. Uh, I go on with knight to f3. Open can castle, but doesn't try to exchange more stuff. Uh, give away his dark square bishop, which is the defender of the side as well. Uh, here I can take on the bishop, but I prefer developing my bishop uh, first. The idea was simple because after he does take, which he was going to, I was pretty sure about the way he was playing, I can take back and then it attacks. Uh, my bishop is wide open attacking his knight. So he has to move his knight next. So he goes back and then I can play a pawn forward, which I do. And uh, he, he, he plays pawn forward here. Doesn't stop me from uh, going ahead or taking on the pawn. Uh, I can take this and then if he takes, that's bad news because he'll lose rook. Um, so already, if you see, white is ahead in the game by 2.8 points. Uh, here, I he played pawn forward and that was worse. Uh, he, it goes to uh, 5.8 as per the evaluation of computer. I play at 6 ahead, moving his pawn, uh, his knight away. And then I give him a check. Now, uh, now you notice how this knight on e5 is a blessing. It's controlling uh, the d7 and as well as the f7. So the king uh, is only going to go on f8. And once king goes to f8, uh, and of course this pawn on h6 will make sure that the opponent cannot go on uh, g7 as well. So opponent has hardly got any space for the king. Also his rook will become more inactive. And then you can probably march on with the attack. 
And if you see the uh, game at this point of time, my opponent had hardly lost a pawn extra than me, maybe, uh, or maybe not even that. And the evaluation is 6.3 in favor of white. So it's not the pieces uh, that gives you the good evaluation or control of the game. It's about how uh, you are playing the game and how much you are able to restrict your opponent king movement as well. If we both have same pieces, still doesn't matter. And now I played uh, g4, which was aggressive, I would say. Uh, I can play queen to uh, d4 as well, but then his knight basically moves away uh, and his pawn is being guarded as well with the bishop. So I don't want to make that happen. So I played g4 myself, asking him to capture if he wants to. Open gives a check, that doesn't help, because uh, this way also you are not going to make any space for your... Uh, king to move because the bishop is eyeing the right diagonal. So I played pawn forward uh, and then he pushes the pawn forward again, the f pawn. Uh, now I took on the pawn first, asking him to take. He does take with the knight and then I go to queen goes to f3. Now trying to pin the knight uh, and I, ha I can exchange uh, the knights as well. And he tries to take away, attack my pawn here on b2. And as the right move, as assisted by the computer as well, I cast on the queen side instead, getting my rooks connected and making sure that my pawn is guarded and I can make use of the rook, other rook as well then in the game, which was not required eventually. But yeah, uh, then opponent plays e6. Uh, I can trap his attack, his knight, uh, rook here, and then maybe go here as well uh, with the knight. But... Probably it was not required. As I said in the game, I just attacked uh, the knight. Uh, and he tries to run away with his king because he saw what's happening and took on the knight. Uh, here he takes with the pawn, which was the right move, I would say. I take back. And then he tries to attack my queen instead. Uh, forgetting that I can give a check from g5. That's what I do. And he goes with king to d6. And then following up with another check so that eventually he loses a rook. And that's what happens. I go to g7 with a check. As you see, uh, this diagonal is controlled by, by my bishop. Uh, and if he plays rook forward, then also I have two attackers here with my bishop and queen there. So king has no other choice but to go uh, on one of the dark squares and lose the control of the rook. And that comes with a check. And it's already lost, as you see. So yes, my opponent can try to run away here. But for how long? It's a matter of time because I'll get my bishop maybe uh, and exchange this. Uh, maybe I'll just get my rook active. Uh, I have a queen already, which we can stop him from running away anywhere. So that was more or less over there. Uh, so I hope you like the video. Uh, and here's why you should never play f5 early in the game. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to the channel. I'll keep posting daily as I always say. And I hope it helps you improve your game. Thank you so much for your time. And do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.